Second John. We're still in the same verse. What we're looking at is verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And we have gone into previous lessons. The judgment seat of Christ. What we're taking part right now in lesson 44 is we've been looking at things you can lose. Now let me make a disclaimer here, bold and bright. You cannot lose your soul. If you're a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone on his merit, not of works, you can't lose it. Because it's not yours to lose. We read in the Psalms over and over, my salvation, my salvation. It's not our salvation. Our salvation is God's salvation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've seen that through the scriptures when we studied that. And we looked at last time, we looked at, and you go back and get the video or the audio, whichever you, you enjoy. We looked at joy. You can lose your joy. Now, this... Deceivers deny Jesus Christ is God. We've seen that over and over. And that another reward besides crowns are to be earned. Now we looked at all the crowns, we looked at the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian, and there is another reward that a Christian can earn along with crowns. Let's take our Bibles to 2 Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 2.12 And we read in the passage that Paul writes to Timothy 2.12 If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Now here's a verse people are going to misapply now. The context of the verse is suffering as a Christian. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. Persecution of the apostles, of the, all through the book of Acts. Persecution of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the next part of this verse we read in 12. If we deny him, he also will deny us. So see, I can lose it. That's not the context that is not what the verse is saying let's look at it again if we suffer i suffer for christ we shall also attain salvation no no it's not what it says we shall also reign reigning is the subject of verse 12. We shall reign with Christ, him. If we deny him. Oh, I don't know Jesus. You don't do what Jesus tells you to do. You don't go in all the world and preach. Listen, you don't go tell people about Jesus Christ. You are denying Jesus Christ. Because you'll tell them about a ball game. You'll tell them about a burger. You'll tell them about a movie. You'll tell them anything about, about Jesus. You are denying Jesus Christ. You are saying, I don't want to have anything to do with him. I don't want anything to do with him. Peter denied Jesus Christ at the fire. I don't know who he is. No, I'm not part of him. Who do you think you're saying I was them? And yet you do that in your life when you don't do what God tells the Christian to do. Go on the world and preach the gospel. Go to church. Study. Encourage Christians. Tell the lost. If we deny him, he also will deny us. All right? We're not done with the verse. But what is the denying? The reign. If I don't suffer with Christ, I have no right to think, you know, I'm going to get a sitting in the millennium. 
If I don't stand up for Jesus Christ, why would I even think about I get something from him? If I don't earn a crown at least, why should I expect anything from him? If we believe not, if you choose to believe that you're no longer saved, if you choose that, you know, I don't believe that it's eternal. I don't believe what the full thing that Christ can do. I think I have to add to it, and I fail. If you believe not, if we believe not, yet he, God, abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. If your very name, Christian, and I mean a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, I don't mean somebody to say, oh, no, I'm Christ. If, you're, are, if you are sealed by the blood and are a Christian, by the merit of Jesus Christ, you are Jesus Christ, and he cannot deny himself. But if you choose not to do, if you choose to deny the Lord, in comes the millennium. Oh, yeah, Lord, what are you? No. You don't get anything. You don't get a rain. Some readers as see, I, I can lose my soul and my salvation. The main subject of the verse is rain. How do we reign with Jesus Christ? We suffer. Now, I don't mean being an idiot and go out there and purposely cause contention and strife. Listen, when you when you stand on the street and you preach Jesus Christ, you're going to suffer. When you go knock on people's door and you bug them, you're going to suffer. If you pass out gospel tracts, you're going to suffer. If you wear a Jesus t-shirt, you're going to suffer. Second Timothy 3.12 states, Yea! All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I'm a godly Christian. Are you suffering? As a godly church, does the city acknowledge your church or is the city against your church? Are they trying to close you down to stop you or are they, or are they giving you rewards that you can put on a wall? Which is it? Suffering is we don't want you here. Jesus' home, own hometown, home city, took him and tried to get rid of him. Tried to cast him over the brow of the city. Judas didn't want anything to do with him. And when we suffer for the word, It doesn't say die. It says suffer. When we are rejected, we are not given promotions. When the family gives us up, when other Christians stab us in the back because of our stand on the word and what the word says, that's suffering. That suffering gets you a reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you choose to go along with the world and be partners and happy, go get lucky and all that other kind of junk, Christ will deny you the reign. You can lose a reign in the millennium for not suffering. You see, you can die foolish and not for Christ. You can step out today in some Muslim country today. Step out on the street corner. Jesus Christ! And then you got your head off. It's not how it's done. You can walk into North Korea. You can walk into China and just preach on the street and you are jailed. Oh, we're persecuted. No, you're a stupid Christian. Because you got to know what the laws and the rules are. Some places require an underground church. Some countries allow you to come in, but you can't come in as a minister, as a preacher, as an evangelist. you got to come in as a teacher. Or some kind of occupation. Israel, I am told, will not allow a Christian to go in 
and preach the gospel and teach or anything like that. He's got to go in, even if he's Jewish, he's got to go in there and live a life and do it within a house kind of study. See, you got to suffer righteously, rightly. And you got to understand the difference. 1 Peter 4.15. I mean, the scale is 1 to 10, and you know what? We're at either end. We're not in the middle. 1 Peter 4.15. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, and I have, Not because I've done anything illegal. I have obeyed the laws of the place, of the city where I am. Happy are ye. If I'm standing, in my, for me particular, if I'm standing on the street corner with a Bible reading to them from the Bible on how to be saved and what God expects to them, and they come up to me and start saying stuff to me, and they don't want me, and they're throwing stuff at me, and they're trying to stop me, they're trying to preach their own little mess, they're trying anything. Happy. Now, if I go in and if I upset their business and I start turning the table, well, Jesus did that. That's not what we're told to do. If I try to boycott, if I try to do things against their business and stop them from getting money purposely, then I'm in the wrong. And they have this particular property, and I cross the line, and they tell me to leave. It's their property, and I stay there. Oh, I got rights and all that. Rah, 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 rah. Get me a lawyer. Get me the Constitution. Wrap myself up in American flag, and I'm sitting in jail. I'm an idiot. Because I have violated the law. And I know a church that did that. There's two, there's two sides of two cities. My, myself, I went and checked with the, the local police department. And happened been, been the, the school there, the, the public school or the area school there. The, I sat with the security office. I sat with the police and the security office of the school and found out where my rights were and where I could be. And we came to a conclusion and we came to acceptable position where it was not compromised. It was just as good as it could have been. And everything went well. Never had any problems. As far as law, being arrested or anything, being asked to leave and all that. I mean, we got heckled and stuff like that. Happy am I. Another church who went against us goes on the other side. Stands in this place. And it was a very good spot. Right in the middle of the road. Protection. Good spot. Stood their ground with their signs. I'm told. And were arrested. Were told to leave. They didn't leave. You're gonna to have to arrest them. And they were arrested. And come to find out after the arrestment, that's a word. Now they found out it was was public property. They were charged with a trespass. Oh, we suffered right. No, you didn't. Have you heard about a trespass offering in the Bible? When you cross the line, you don't belong. Now, there may be a day that this nation will make laws against preaching. You're going to have to go against the laws to preach the gospel and get it out. But then you're going to have to take the arrest. You're going to have to take the jail. Like Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than man. But we're not there in America, so let's not get there. Let's get to where we are right now, 2015. They're getting rid of the Confederate flag. The next thing they're going to get rid of is your Bible. But let's stay in 2015. In order to suffer for a Christian, you need to know what the laws of the land are. You need to know what is right and wrong. And when you suffer for Jesus Christ rightfully, happy are ye. For the spirit of, the glo of glory and of God rests upon you. When you do right, when you do lawfully right, the Spirit of God rests upon you. 
on their part, he is evil spoken. All those are not saved. All those are, they speak evil of God. But on your part, he is glorified. When you knock on someone's door and they're an aggravated fire for you to bring a gospel and not Playboy or Avon, they're evil spoken of God, and yet you, you are glorified by God. How can you be glorified by God? Go do something that pleases God. And do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and do it rightfully. Again, I'm knocking on doors. Amen, glory. That's a wonderful thing. You approach this house. No trespassing. Keep out. Be aware. Watch out for the dog. And you cross the sidewalk. You cross the gate. And you go up to this guy's step. And, and, and you are mistreated. And you are disrespectfully treated. May, I don't know. Maybe forced or whatever. Something like that. Or, or The guy put a sign. On his property that says you are not welcome don't stand there at the door while he's screaming at your face oh I'm suffering for Christ no you're not well he needed the gospel really look at his mailbox okay Brown his last name is Brown 413 Main Street, whatever city you are. Go home, write down an envelope, Brown, 1435 Main Street, whatever city or town is, put a stamp on it, and put a gospel track in that envelope, and mail him the gospel. And put your name on the track. Maybe he'll invite you to his house. And you've done nothing illegal, nothing wrong. And you be glorified. And happy are ye. There's no greater joy than I have when I do what's right. As far as the street preaching that God's given me. Now there have been times where, okay, we've gone to done something and we are rebuked. And we're unsure. We're, we're not sure if it's right or wrong. We back away and we feel, oh, maybe we did do wrong. Oh, you know, I'm sure. And then we go find out what the laws are. We go find out what the situation is. But when we stand where we are and do what we're supposed to, and we are legally and lawfully right, and we are doing what Christ tells us to do, it's a joyful event. You know? You got a, a ball field. Basketball, football, baseball, whatever it is. And here's a stadium. And you walk out to the 50-yard line. You walk out to the pitcher's mound. I don't know what they call the center of a basketball court. You walk out to that spot. And the game's going on. And all the fans are cheering. And you stand in that spot there and say, Jesus saves! And when they pull you off with security. That's not the place. That's not the time. You didn't suffer. For Christ, you suffer as an idiot. Now, if you went and spoke to the to the teams, if you went and spoke to the person that owned the stadium and say, "Listen, at a particular time of an event, can I go up to the center of this event and can I just proclaim that Jesus saved and then walk up?" And they give you permission. Oh, amen. Glory to God. Do it. So, but let none of you suffer as a murderer. After you're saved, don't you go kill anybody. Or as a thief, don't you steal anything after you're saved. Or as an evildoer. Or as a busybody. <laughs> Paul, why did you throw that in there? In other man's business, or matters, excuse me, other man's matters. Yet, if a man suffer as a Christian, so there's a suffering 
of sin and there is suffering as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Check out Daniel chapter 3. Daniel is an example of this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is an example of this. Peter in the book of Acts is an example of this. You know, when Jesus wasn't wanted, he didn't call the lawyers. He just left. Ten lepers healed. One turned around and praised God. Jesus didn't go after the other nine. He asked, where are they? But he focused on the one. Christians for Christ, when he suffers rightly, he earns the right to reign over cities on this earth during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, we read, And it came to pass that when he was returned, Having received the kingdom, Jesus Christ, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. The second came, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise to them, be thou over five cities. What pounds God has given you, the gain thereof, by suffering, by doing, not only do you get crowns, but you will get a chance to have cities in the millennium. As Christ sits, King of kings and Lord of lords of all, in Jerusalem, you know, I'd be happy with just one city, but I'm not going to be content with just one city. I want to please the Lord all the way. How do you please the Lord? How are you glorified by God? By doing the ministry God has given you rightfully. There's a proper way to offend and there's an improper way to offend. I don't preach on the streets sin as if I see a girl walk by with a miniskirt, if I see a guy with a Budweiser, if I see a person with a cigarette. I don't. No, I preach sin in general. I preach the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I preach the gospel. I don't believe when you're on the streets and nitpick sins individually. That's wrong. You may do it, but I believe it's wrong. I don't believe you have the guts to deal with a person off the side one-on-one. On one. I mean, if you take a shotgun and you fire it, some of you are going to hit. Now, in 2 Timothy 2.12, go back there, 2 Timothy 2.12, and you can lose this right. You can gain rewards and you can lose crowns. You can gain a, a reign and you can lose it. Or not even get it. If you choose not to serve the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.12 If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us the right to reign. The Christian will be able to reign in cities of this earth for suffering over the word. Jesus Christ and trying to do right in the eyes of the Father. You know, when you are the joke, you are the object of the practical jokes and the talk and the mayhem at work because you're a Christian and you got a Bible and you don't cuss and your family's happy and your daughters are sweet and your sons are men. And your job is great. 
and your ethnics are right, and your character is true, uh, strong and proven, and it's all for Christ. That's suffering. So you didn't get the promotion of the job. What about the promotion of the Lord Jesus Christ when he gives you a city? Isn't that better than being a manager? Where if your employees don't do the job, you'll have to do it? You're the manager now. You'll get the, the ulcer in your stomach. They won't. God's a great rewarder, isn't he? He is so wonderful. He loves us so much. Now, if we deny him. And this is precisely what deceivers want Christians to do. This is what Satan wants you to do. This is what worldly Christians want you to do. This is what your boss wants you to do. This is what people around you want you to do. This is what your family wants you to do. They want you to deny Jesus Christ. If you can't take Jesus with you, then you don't go. I'm going to go to a family event. Then I want to pray for our meal. I want to pray for the event in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you can't do that. Then I'm not welcome if my Jesus is not welcome. And if you go, you deny Jesus Christ and you lost. You're a loser. You ought to make in your life right now to go where Jesus is wanting. Or don't go at all. That's denying. You say, well, you know, you go on the streets knocking the door. You know, people don't want you there. There are some who do. And you'll be amazed on how many people will come up and shake my hand. Thank, thank us for being there. How many people at your family reunion, how many people at your company Christmas party come up and thank you for being a correct? What are you doing at the, at the company Christmas party? What are you doing with the booze and all that? You are even not to be there. Part of your suffering the Christmas party should be, uh, uh, Fred's not here because he's a Christian and we drink and smoke while, and while we're around. He doesn't have to do any of that stuff. He just stays home, goes with his family, and goes to church three times. That's suffering. And God will reward you. Christian, you got to understand there are places where you do not belong. You'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day and find out that the Bible's right and you're wrong. And the biggest sin in the world, the biggest troublemaker that a Christian suffers is, I like it. I'm pointing a finger at you. Because you got to get down and, and right. you got to get down and say, am I going to serve Christ or am I going to serve anything else? Because it's Christ or anything else. You can't walk the middle line. You make God sick. And when you do not stand up for Jesus, you deny Jesus. It's plain and simple. There's no half city. There's no half reward. It's all the way or it's no way. That's why we're in the mess we are in churches today. That's why we're in the mess we are with family. Because we want to walk both sides of the road. And we keep getting smashed and run over by cars and buses and trucks. No, you suffered for Jesus' sake. No, you didn't. Satan cannot get your soul. It's saved. But he can get you to forfeit, forfeit your reward. Satan can't get your soul. But he can, for, he can get you to forfeit your reward. If he can have you be denied of a reign... And loss of a crown. But he can't get your soul. And you walk 
of, for a thousand years in the millennium with no city because you denied Jesus Christ. You walk for eternity in New Jerusalem with no crown because you lost the reward. You're saved. But no reward. Isn't Satan slick? Doesn't he got it all down? You can't lose your soul, but look what you can lose. The prodigal son took all his inheritance and left and came back with nothing. Satan will try to break your fellowship with God. And a broken fellowship with God comes out as loss of rewards and reign. Fellowship with God is doing what God wants you to do, being pleased, pleasing to God. The loss of a reign is when you deny. The loss of crowns is when you don't do right. And you're out of, out of fellowship with God. So when Satan can get you out of fellowship of God, you are a loser. More ways than one. What did John say? This, this, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we had wrought but that we receive a full reward, and we lose. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, I want to see if I want to stop here. What we got next right here real quick. Okay, let's finish this off. Let's try to finish this off. In religions, there are born-again Christians. There are born-again Christians in the Catholic Church. There are born-again Christians in the Mormon Church. There are born-again Christians in Jehovah Witnesses. There's a born, there are born-again Christians in uh, Pagan. Maybe witchcraft. There are born-again Christians in the, the Congregational Church. People say and fall away to other religions. There are religions that go out there to get the young sheep. Those Christians are saved as much as you and I. They were led astray. Where was the pastor? Where was the other Christians that helped this poor defenseless land? Though they lose rewards, excuse me, they lose rewards according to 2 John. Now this is important as we get these Christians that go into false religion because we're going to get into a false religion. But those that fall into these religions lose reward. They do not adhere to John's warning. It's in the book. It's on the bookshelf. It's in the car. It's on, on holding the coffee table up with a broken leg. It's at the dollar store. It's on eBay. You can't excuse yourself from the book in 2015. You can have access online to the, to, the, to the Bible. Your telephone can have the Bible. Your iPod can have the Bible. It's in here. There are no excuses. As we saw with deceivers, we go back into the study, they deny Jesus Christ of his deity and godship. He's not God. He's a great teacher. And these born-again new Christians in the Lord, maybe old too, I don't know, all ages I guess, sit under the deceivers that continue to teach such heresies and they escape not. Righteous Lot, just Lot, escaped. 
But the angels had to practically tie him up and drag him out. They didn't, but they practically. I mean, it says that, was it, was he lingered? <laughs> I'll give Lot as much credit as he left, but he left rewardless. What did he have? A wife and two daughters. What did he have when he finally got out of there? Two daughters. But he left. But he left. He didn't stay. Do you know somebody who's in a, in a in a cult that's in a religion and that's and they haven't left and yet they stay and they are a little lamb in a congregation of wolves. Lord, open our eyes that we may see. Second Timothy two. Jesus will deny him Christian. Christian. Which fell away the right, if he had any right, to the millennial reign. You could be you could be right now five cities and then deny Jesus Christ and lose him. One event that, that where you can't bring your Lord God and Savior five cities gone. I hope it was worth it. I hope those people were worth it. Because there's always people over the one person. It's always sinners versus the sinless. It's always the wolves amongst the lamb. And when we lose. As for this day, uh, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's all. It's in many Christian houses up on walls, plaques. And, but do you know what Joshua was saying? You don't want to serve the Lord? Get out of my house. Only the Lord. Second Timothy 2, Jesus will deny him, the Christian, which fell away to right, if he had any, to the millennial reign. Falling off the deceivers is a loss to you, the right to reign with Jesus Christ. Paul and John are sure on this. See, I'm not a Paul only -ism. I'm every Bible. The Bible is written by, written by God. God wrote Genesis of Revelation. He used man to write it. I'm trying to turn my page in, it's not working. God is the ink and man is the pen. So let's continue. If we believe not, yet he is abides faithful and he cannot deny himself. Now, we're talking about salvation. Even if a Christian doesn't believe anymore in the salvation of Jesus Christ, if he denies his soul, his soul God's salvation, even that, Jesus Christ will not deny him the salvation. That verse uh, before was not about the salvation. Now it's about the rain. Now we're talking about salvation. We are Christ and Christ. Uh, we are in Christ and Christ is in us. He cannot deny himself. Now here's a list of born again Christian can lose. Here's a list that Christians can lose. You might want to get a pen and paper, some of you. Ooh, what the whole right? What can I lose? I want to know what I can lose. Got a pen and paper? Number one, we can lose our testimony. Like Lot did. We can lose our health. 1 Corinthians 11. We can lose our rewards. 1 Corinthians 
we can lose our inheritance, Colossians 3, 24 and 25. We can lose our joy, Psalms 51, 12. We can lose our assurance, 1 John 3, 20 to 22. We can lose our life, 1 Corinthians 10, 10 and 11. We can lose our right to reign, 2 Timothy 2, 12 and 13. But we cannot, we cannot, we cannot lose our soul. The only way a person can lose their soul and die and go to hell is by rejecting the finished work upon the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary. The merit of the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for our sins. Rejecting that. You lost your soul. One of the things on the list we lost is insurance. You can lose insurance. You got to get back in the book. You got to get back in fellowship. What did you say here? Uh, we haven't got to it yet. Um, Second John. Verse 1, the elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Not, amen. Verse 4, I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth. Now, if you're not walking in truth, the reason why you have some of these losses because if you're walking in truth you will do what the Bible tells you to do and you want to be in the situation you are in remember what Satan, Satan cannot take or I, I gotta express this you can't lose your soul if you're saved Satan cannot take your soul but he can take your fellowship from you and God and as a result, you become a loser of rewards and the right to reign. When Satan took that fellowship of Adam and Eve of God, God comes walking in the midst of the day, they hear his voice, and what do they do? They hide. Why? They were ashamed. They are ashamed of what they have done. And then what happened? God drove them out. They lost the garden. You see that? Sin causes you to lose. And again, chapter, verse 8, look to yourself. Yourself. You. The one that you live with 24 hours a day. That one when you look in the mirror. Look to yourself. On this aspect of this verse, look to yourself. Don't, no one else. It ain't your spouse. It ain't your children. It ain't your parents. It ain't your church congregation. Look to yourself. Now, Paul was going to, I'm speaking with myself, that we, that's all Christians. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought. You don't work for salvation. You work because you are saved. And when you do something for Christ, look at this, but that we receive a full reward. When you work for Christ after salvation, you get rewarded. And yet those rewards are not guaranteed like salvation. They're not signed, sealed, and delivered like salvation. It is something you can lose. Don't worry about your soul. Don't worry about the rewards and the crowns and the reigning that God has offered to you because of Jesus Christ. That warning stretches out here. 
we have gone into great detail. This this verse is over and over and over and over in this study. And yet, even myself, what rewards am I going to lose? that I shouldn't know. And why? Who drove me away from that reward? What drove me away from that reward? How was I driven away from that reward? Where did I go to get that reward taken away? And which crown did I lose? Which city did I lose? And was it worth it? Was that event worth it? Was that person worth it? To stand before Jesus Christ on your knees, bowing down, and no crown to be put on your head. Getting ready to walk into the new earth. Jerusalem. Thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. You walk in, he puts his arm. No, nope, not for you. I don't know what happens to, to Christians that don't get a right to reign in the millennium. I don't know what happens to them. It's not recorded. I don't know if they go in. I don't know if they don't. What right would somebody who didn't want to deny Jesus Christ, what right would that person who denied Jesus Christ have with the right to be somebody who stood up to Jesus? Maybe those who don't, those who deny Jesus Christ, maybe they're put under people who did not deny Jesus Christ. And we're going into a danger now. Man, you thought eight verses, 45 lessons on eight verses of the Bible, and you think, wow, we're going into a particular religion next. That is damned millions of souls worldwide. You know, the, you know the hardest thing about it before we get into it? Their lies are public. They are in books. They are published. Jesus Christ did not come back in 1914. He did not come back in this day. This house never did house Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet they flock. And are filled. With deceivers. There are over 144,000 of them. And they deny Jesus Christ is God. We'll get into that. We'll get into when they come knocking at your door. And I, I'm one of the people that take this verse quite literally. When we get there. Don't lose, earn, gain, please the Lord, be glorified by the Lord, make the Lord happy, it'll be worth it all. Go look at Lot. 